After two fatal crashes in construction zones, we're asking the Department of Transportation how common this is and what needs to change. And a Republican measure that looks to punish doctors who do not provide care to a baby after a failed abortion attempt moves forward at the state capitol. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 6. And thanks for joining us tonight. Construction, of course, is a reality of the season, but crashes don't have to be. Officials are urging caution following two fatal accidents in work zones within just an hour of each other. Our Keely Arthur is live with an update. Well, we're at Highway 12 in the intersection of County Road PF, and almost exactly 24 hours ago, a person died here. Now, officials say construction wasn't necessarily to blame, but these cones as distractions and smaller lanes, people certainly need to be a bit more mindful while driving here. You go different places, there's always going to be construction barrels everywhere you go. And with more road work comes more crashes. The Wisconsin DOT says there were 3,157 crashes in work zones last year, 1,274 injuries and nine deaths. The numbers now starting to stack up early in 2019's construction season. Oh, there was a car traveling southbound on Highway 12 and it made a left-hand turn on the county highway PF and it made that turn right in front of a, a northbound vehicle that struck the passenger side. Um, there's one fatality in that. That was in Sauk County near County Road PF around 545 PM Tuesday. Just 42 minutes before that, another deadly construction zone crash in Columbia County, where one person died and seven others injured after a freight truck failed to slow down as it entered the work area. I think the biggest thing we see in crashes is the inattentive driving. Probably the two tickets that I write the most for crashes is inattentive driving and then following too close. If you're following the car in front of you too closely and then you get distracted by even the smallest thing, you can't see that vehicle braking in front of you. and. That can even happen you know, even quicker in a construction zone. And other than keeping your life, another reason to stay extra focused while driving alongside the orange cones? Avoiding a fat fine. The base fine will double in a construction zone. Now, the DOT does monitor these construction zone accidents to see if there are any trends, and then they make adjustments accordingly. We saw that happen last summer after a number of crashes on I-90 south of Madison. The DOT did adjust the speed limit from 70 to 55. A Madison School District teacher is facing child abuse charges for allegedly slamming a door in a student's face. It is not clear at which school this happened, but the teacher, Christopher Rumbelow, is listed on Franklin Elementary's website as a gym teacher. The complaint says the student left the classroom after a disagreement and repeatedly closed the classroom door. Rumbelow then opened the door and the handle apparently hit the student in the forehead. A statement from the district reads, quote, as soon as the incident occurred, the staff person was immediately put on administrative leave. The employee will remain on leave while the criminal process is ongoing, and we will take appropriate follow-up steps based on the outcome of that process. Rumbelow is due in court tomorrow morning for his initial appearance. If you had to take a different route into downtown Mount Horeb this afternoon, police say that was because a semi got stuck in a roundabout. The department posted about this on Facebook around 1230, saying traffic would have to find a different way into the village because the roundabout near Quick Trip was closed. It took about an hour to clear up. Well, the warm weather continues tomorrow, but it comes with a chance of thunderstorms. Let's check your first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. We'll have to keep an eye out for the possibility for some strong to severe thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon as a cold front moves in from the northwest. Now let's start out by taking a look at visible cloud track. Things very quiet around here. Just a few cumulus clouds popping up this afternoon. But in the upper left-hand corner of your screen, you can see the thunderstorms moving through the Dakotas toward uh, northwestern Minnesota. There's already a severe thunderstorm. Watch out for that area. On Doppler track, you can see some lightning flashes out there. But uh, the uh, severe weather threat could uh, move into parts of southern Wisconsin tomorrow afternoon. Low temperatures this morning started out pretty mild. Here in Madison, we're at 44 degrees. Temperatures were actually a little warmer to our north and east where there was a little thicker cloud cover. The high temperatures for today were generally in the mid to upper 70s. La Crosse touched the 80 degree mark. Even the lakeshore areas were mild before a lake breeze kicked in. Notice how it's cooled off there. Milwaukee was in the mid 70s. They dropped to 62. Here in Madison, we're still at 75 degrees. In fact, most of these readings away from Lake Michigan are near the high temperatures for the day. But tomorrow morning, temperatures will be down into the 50s. Look for a 
a slight chance of showers by early tomorrow morning, but scattered showers and thunderstorms will be likely tomorrow morning and then again late tomorrow afternoon. In between, our high temperature should top out at 75 degrees. That's your News 3 Now First Alert forecast. Gary, thank you. The Wisconsin state budget will have $753 million more than originally expected. That is largely due to federal tax law changes that caused a one-time spike in collections. The money now becomes available for the legislature as it works on a two-year spending plan. Republicans, though, have differing opinions on what to do with that money. Assembly Speaker Robin Voss says the money should go to tax cuts, reserves, and paying down debt. The state Supreme Court expected to rule by this summer on a lawsuit challenging laws passed during that lame duck session back in December, weakening the powers of the incoming Democratic governor and attorney general. Today, the state's highest court heard oral arguments in that case. The conservative-leaning judges poking holes in the arguments of the League of Women Voters and other liberal groups who claim the lame duck session was illegal. A Dane County judge ruled in their favor in January, and Republican lawmakers are hoping the Supreme Court will overturn that decision. Today, the lawyers for the Republican-controlled legislature argued that lawmakers never adjourned last spring, so the lame duck session was legal. The state Senate could take up a package of anti-abortion bills next month after they passed the assembly this afternoon. That includes what's being called the Born Alive Bill. The measure could send doctors to prison for life if they refuse to provide care to a baby following a failed abortion attempt. Democrats say the bills are distractions to shift attention away from popular items in Democratic Governor Tony Evers' budget. But Republican leaders say they don't want to leave any gray area in the law. When a baby survives an abortion, takes that first breath of life, that doctors are required to do everything that they can do to ensure that baby survives. All these bills have a chilling effect on the, on the adequate and appropriate care that physicians and providers should give to their patients. Governor Evers has already promised to veto the Born Alive bill if it passes both houses. It has not been scheduled in the Senate yet. New at 6, the state Senate passes a bill to eliminate a tax loophole that allowed companies to earn tax deductions for moving jobs out of state. That measure passed the Assembly in April. Under current law, companies can deduct the cost of moving expenses when they move operations out of state or to a different country. Today, the Assembly honored the 13-year-old girl from Barron, Wisconsin, who survived a kidnapping held hostage for nearly three months. Jamie, your strength, your resolve, and your bravery is beyond incredible. You are truly an inspiration and a bright light during a time of sadness. And you taught us an important lesson. No matter how great your situation, no matter how dark your days become, and no matter how impossible your circumstances may seem, there is always hope. Jamie Kloss was with her family members and friends to receive the hometown hero honor. It was a rare public appearance for her. Jamie's aunt, Jen Smith, accepted the award and called Jamie's bravery and spirit inspiring. She thanked the community of Barron for their support and love. Madison is losing another retail store. Gap on State Street is having a going out of business sale. This comes after the company announced back in February it would close 230 of its stores over the next two years. Officials cited a 7% fall in sales over the holidays. The Gap store at West Town Mall remains open. You won't have to dig around for change anymore when you're downtown parking. The city recently installed more than 650 smart meters, so you can pay by debit or credit card if you don't have any coins handy. The city hopes to expand options to pay using your smartphone by the end of the year. There are no coin-only machines left in Madison. 1,000 guests in town for UW-Madison's graduation this past weekend brought in $133,000 to Airbnb owners. The company said this was the second largest surge of guests to Madison in the history of the room booking platform. August CrossFit Games still hold that record. According to Airbnb, the surge also brought in additional tax revenue due to a room tax agreement with the city. Still ahead tonight, a live report from Milwaukee as the Bucks are now about an hour away from tipping off the Eastern Conference Finals. But first, UW finally unveils what has been hiding under that blue tarp at Library Mall. We'll explain the story next.
If you have been wondering what is under the blue tarps on Library Mall, we have an answer. The finishing touches were put on a new sculpture today. The title of the project is Both and Tolerance Innovation. The stone and stainless steel sculpture was designed by UW alum David Dahlquist and Matt Niebuhr to represent the confluence of ideas and the cultural diversity at that location. The piece they designed kind of recognizes that flow and interaction of students, the diversity of students, you know, the rest of the community. And they designed it to be sort of the way, you know, you would see a stone in a, in a body of water and the way the flow goes around that island. The sculpture will officially be dedicated at 3.30 in the afternoon on June 1st. We're getting a first-hand look at the Milwaukee County Zoo's new elephant exhibit. The 20,000 square foot elephant care center has room for play and enrichment activities, plus individual stalls for training as well. The space is four times larger than the previous elephant exhibit. It features a conservation outpost that will educate visitors and encourage them to sign a petition to ban the ivory trade in Wisconsin. Milwaukee is the closest place to Madison where you can take the family to see elephants. Of course, the big excitement in Milwaukee today is over a different animal, the deer. This morning, a Bucks-themed mural was unveiled on the side of an apartment building just south of the Menominee River. The 2,000-square-foot mural took 80 hours to complete. Tonight, the Bucks take on the Raptors in the first game of the Eastern Conference Finals. Kevin Lewis has a live report from Pfizer Forum coming up in sports. As if the stakes for that game weren't high enough, there's beer on the line. Milwaukee Mayor Tom Barrett and Toronto Mayor John Tory have agreed to a friendly wager. Whichever city loses will have to give the other craft beer. And coming up, a local brewery is hoping an innovative treatment can help protect its pond there from blue-green algae blooms this summer. We'll explain how it works. And a nice day out today, but tomorrow, thunderstorm chances return. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti shares the details in his first alert forecast coming up.
A pond next to a local brewery is undergoing an innovative treatment to reduce blue-green algae blooms. Last year, the pond next to Wisconsin Brewing Company saw a bad algae bloom. Dane County hopes to prevent that from happening again, giving the city of Verona a $50,000 grant to clean up the water. Today, the pond, nicknamed Lake Sadie May, was treated with an aluminum-based chemical, creating a cotton-like film that will clear up the water in just 24 hours. We're really looking at cleaning the pond up from a safety perspective and also it'll be a lot more aesthetic because uh, by morning it should be crystal clear uh, and not only beautiful but also safer for for everyone who who recreates in it, including dogs according to public health madison blue green algae can make people sick if they swallow it or if it, it contacts their skin for a long period of time for dogs it can be fatal wisconsin brewing company wants the water to be safe for paddle sports this summer plus ice fishing and ice skating in the winter. They get a ton of dogs out there that get into that water as well. Mm -hmm. and, and we're hoping to have some weather where we can get out and enjoy for the days ahead. We're starting to get there a couple good days in a row, but things are going to change. And we got rain on the way, you know, off and on rain, not continuous rains, but uh, every day. I think we have rain in the forecast just about uh, through the weekend. Let's start out by taking a look at the weather we had today. Visible cloud track shows a nice day. There were a couple of sprinkles that popped up with a very weak cold front, which is stalling out across central Wisconsin. Other than that, we had plenty of sunshine. To our north and west, though, this is where the trouble is brewing. Some thunderstorms already through the Dakotas into northwestern Minnesota. In fact, uh, that area under a severe thunderstorm watch until midnight tonight just came out there for the central Dakotas. Uh, as that area of thunderstorms moves to the southeast, it'll reach us tomorrow morning. That might calm things down enough, keep us cool enough to prevent more storms from firing up in the afternoon. However, it's possible we could see another round of thunderstorms develop over uh, parts of southern Wisconsin late tomorrow afternoon. Because of that, the Storm Prediction Center has a slight risk of severe thunderstorms, basically from Madison southward to the marginal risk, a little lesser risk up to the north, hail and gusty winds being the main threat. Now, that front will stall out to the south on Friday and then eventually start working northward as a warm front late Friday afternoon and Friday night. Additional thunderstorms will develop Friday afternoon, a marginal risk mainly for hail expected on Friday, but notice the growing severe weather threat out to the west. It's possible that severe weather uh, could affect parts of southern Wisconsin for Saturday and Sunday as well. Too early to, to uh, tell exactly because a lot of it will depend on the position of fronts. We do have an alert day in the forecast though for tomorrow for the potential for some hail or gusty winds and stronger thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon. Rainfall is going to be another problem because not only are we expecting thunderstorms tomorrow and Friday, but also for Saturday and Sunday as well. You add it all up and the computer models are showing a general one to two and a half inch rain over much of southern Wisconsin with localized amounts in excess of three inches in heavier thunderstorms. That could cause some problems with river flooding uh, over that period of time. Live here from the Queen Bee Radio Sky Cam and Platteville, pretty clear there looking out toward the west. This is looking out toward the east uh, from the or northeast from the WIC Sky Cam. A few more clouds there and the Edgewater Sky Cam in downtown Madison showing partly sunny skies. Beautiful day today. Our low temperature this morning, 44. The high temperature at 75 degrees. And right now we're sitting at 75. The air is calm and the humidity is still rather low at 36 percent. Temperatures are in the 70s to around 80 away from Lake Michigan. A lake breeze has kicked in by mid-afternoon. These areas hit the 70s and then dropped off into the 60s as the lake breeze kicked in. But while the upper level winds are from the southwest, that's not going to be for long because a big storm system moving into the western part of the country that will really move eastward and affect our weather over the weekend will turn those upper level winds to the southwest. Temperatures are very warm to our south and west. In fact, on the other side of this warm front, uh, they were in the upper 80s are still around 90 degrees in uh, parts of Kansas. Our side of the front still pretty mild, generally in the 70s, but the humidity is also starting to increase. As those storm systems start to move eastward, it'll tap in some of this moisture and the threat for rain will start going up beginning tomorrow and like I say, off and on into the weekend. On future track, you can see this. Here's the thunderstorms reaching us tomorrow morning, them dying out and then maybe firing up tomorrow afternoon ahead of the cold front. As that moves through, the front will stall to the south and then you can see the front not very far to the south with showers and thunderstorms into the day on Friday and we'll see those continue off and on into the weekend. Look for partly cloudy skies tonight. Low temperature, a very comfortable 50 degrees for tomorrow. Our high temperature topping out at 75. Could see a round of showers and thunderstorms in the morning and then again later in the afternoon. The afternoon one's a little more iffy, but if they do occur, that's where the severe weather potential will be highest. Future track quiet for much of the night. Showers and storms moving through tomorrow morning. Maybe firing up tomorrow afternoon right along that front. Once the front drops to our south, the threat for rain will end until early on Friday morning. And then Friday we'll see off and on shower and thunderstorm chances. Temperatures will be cooler though with an easterly wind. And again, adding up all the way rain through the weekend. In fact, the very latest computer models now showing perhaps some three inch amounts in heavier thunderstorms out to the west. Seven to 10 day forecast. You can see the temperatures uh, 
rather cool for this time of year, still in the 60s when we should be in the 70s. We'll warm up toward the end of next week. We'll go live to Milwaukee where Kevin Lewis looks ahead to game one between the Bucks and Raptors. That's coming up in sports. Game one of the Eastern Conference Finals is finally here. The Bucks and Raptors tip off just after 7.30 tonight at Fiserv Forum. We go live to Milwaukee where Kevin Lewis joins us for a look at the Bucks and the Raptors. Hi, Kevin. Good evening. And Bucks head coach Mike Budenholzer brought a new offensive game plan in his first season with the Deer, encouraging his players to let it fly whenever they have the chance. And they have. In the regular season, the Bucks were second in the NBA in three-point takes and makes. They're still second in the playoffs in makes. Giannis says the ability to spread the floor lets him do his thing and lets him help his teammates do theirs. First time we met, they said, I mean, you can be good. You know, we know that, but how can we make your teammate be effective? And uh, he's done a great job making guys, you know, uh, being effective, uh, having them have open shots, putting, putting them in the right spot to be successful. So it's definitely giving a lot of uh, space for me to um, make my plays and uh, Bledsoe also increase. The president is arrested. Malcolm Brogdon said the long layoffs helped his healing right foot, but he's anxious to play. Brogdon coming off the bench for the second straight game, said he needed to get some minutes before taking on Kawhi Leonard and the Raptors, and he doesn't mind coming off the bench at all. We play a different sort of style of basketball. We don't have as many juggernauts on that second team, so the ball moves. Um, and the guys play with a lot of freedom, play with a lot of confidence. Um, we really try to serve coming off the benches, sort of spark plugs to the game. I was hoping these other series would end earlier and we get to play Monday, but um, you just got to sort of go roll with the punches and uh, be ready to play when, you're, when your name's called. 
Game one of the Eastern Conference Finals just after 7.30 tonight on TNT. The Bucks haven't been here in 18 years. Giannis Antetokounmpo, Kawhi Leonard, two of the best players on this planet, maybe some others, trying to give their team a 1-0 lead tonight at the Pfizer Forum. Jay, back to you in Madison. All right, Kevin, enjoy the game. We'll check back in with you tonight at 10. The Brewers stopped their three-game losing streak in Philadelphia last night. They're playing there again tonight, up 1-0 in the first inning. They'll wrap up the four-game series tomorrow afternoon before they head to Atlanta. At the World Hockey Championship in Slovakia, the United States plays Great Britain, and Chicago Blackhawk Patrick Kane gets a goal and two assists to become the United States' all-time leading scorer at the World Championships. Do you know who he passed? Badger women's hockey coach Mark Johnson, who played in eight World Championships, scored 33 points from 1978 to 1990. Now, the U.S. won today's game 6-3 over Great Britain, but the Brits are thrilled they even scored. They had lost their previous three games by a total of 17 to nothing. Their fans are crazy. Five of them dressed up like the Spice Girls. <laughs> Remember them from the mid-90s? Yes. So tonight's question is, can you name the five Spice Girls? Oh. Sporty. Sporty's right. one. Posh. Posh is two. There's a baby. Scary. Baby. baby. Scary. Ginger. One more. Ginger. This is I'm right in our generation. That's it. Uh -huh. We could be on a game show together. Yeah, Scary, could. sporty, <laughs> baby, and ginger, and posh. <laughs> Who are the Spice Girls? Uh, I'm really concerned about They're all of them. They're after your time. In different ways. They're after your time. <laughs> well done. So. Well done. All right. Well, we're watching the weather for tomorrow. I'll just keep my mind on the weather <laughs> instead of the Spice Girls. You do you, Gary. You Think, do you. Things pretty <laughs> quiet out there right now, but tomorrow uh, you can see some storms out in the Dakotas moving in our direction. There is a slight risk of severe thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow evening, so keep an eye on that. And even a marginal risk into Friday, too. So. Off and on, thunderstorms will be with us into the weekend. Uh, 75 right now, very comfortable out there away from Lake Michigan, and temperatures will be in the mid-70s for tomorrow. We do have that alert day for the potential for severe weather, and then uh, rain will keep our temperatures down a bit into the weekend. We'll have to wait till the end of next week to warm up with another round of showers and thunderstorms by the middle of next week. All right, Gary, thank you very much. Sure. And thank you for joining us for News for Now at 6. Enjoy your evening, and we'll see you back here at 10.